that chronicles the extent of human rights violations and documents possible war crimes in Yemen. The findings presented to the Security Council are sharply critical of Saudi-led coalition airstrikes, which have caused the majority of civilian deaths in the war. The report also bolsters accusations by the U.S. that Iranian weapons have been supplied to Houthi rebels, which breaks a U.N. embargo. The United Arab Emirates is accused of running torture camps in Yemen, where people have allegedly been beaten and electrocuted. The report paints a devastating picture of a conflict which has left more than 10,000 people dead and led to widespread famine and displacement. Our diplomatic ed editor James Bays, who saw the report, has more. This report, which hasn't been made public, but which I have read, will be very tough reading for the 15 members of the UN Security Council. It's critical of all sides in the war in Yemen, critical of the Saudi-led coalition for civilian casualties. It says that some of those who've planned and executed airstrikes, which have ended up targeting civilians, might be subject to sanctions. That's something the Security Council will have to decide on. It says that one of the countries involved in that coalition, the UAE, has been responsible for torture in Yemen. It talks about beatings, electrocution, constrained suspension, the use of what it calls the cage, confinement in a cage in the sunlight, and the denial of medical treatment. Criticism too, though, for the Houthis and for Iran. It says that there appears to be evidence that military equipment uh, and drones have actually been transferred from Iran to the Houthis. Again, that could be a breach of UN resolutions. Earlier we spoke to Adam Barron, who's a visiting fellow at the European Council on Foreign Relations. He told us it's unlikely the UN report will be followed up by diplomatic action in Yemen. These war crime allegations have been going around and been voiced by a number of UN officials uh, for some time. Don't get me wrong, I think this is very important that these things are being documented, if not, you know, perhaps for immediate action for the sake of the future and for it to be recorded uh, in history. Uh, but I think in a lot of ways, unfortunately, and particularly with, uh, you would say, the lack of U.S. leadership in the region at this point, uh, it's, it's really hard to imagine there being sustained diplomatic action on Yemen at, at this point, despite the, I would say, severity of the allegations that we're seeing in this report and the deep severity of the situation in Yemen right now. Uh, when you look at it, it's easy for them, to, for people to kind of deflect. And that goes not just for uh, the states that are involved in this conflict, whether we're speaking uh, Saudi Arabia, whoever, Iran, uh, but this is also in terms of internal parties. And you've seen, I guarantee you, that you will have significant reporting on this document by uh, media aligned with all of the key warring parties. That being said, what you're going to see is, you know, when, say, the Houthis and their aligned media are talking about this report, they'll leave out all of the stuff criticizing the Houthis. And when you see, you know, uh, media aligned with some of the coalition member states, they'll completely report on the allegations against the Houthis and the documented uh, abuses by the Houthis, but we'll leave out other things. So I think that's kind of an, an issue at this point, is there's this climate really of of impunity in, in the conflict in Yemen. Uh, and when you have all sides really committing these kind of violations, it makes it even harder to really hold anybody to account. And unfortunately, this just underlines the extent that this conflict continues to be just a horrific tragedy for the Yemeni people, who, while their leaders are largely growing rich off this war, uh, continue to suffer the world's worst humanitarian crisis.